There's a whistle, and here comes Hoppity. Thanks, Hoppity. Here it is. It's from little Teddy Bergman of Manhattan, Long Island. And Teddy wants Eddie the expert to tell him if it's true that porcupines shoot their quills. How about it, Mr. Expert? Does the book have the answer to that one? You remember, that was that tough one. Come on now, let's get busy quick. Well, Teddy Bergman, Eddie says no. If you want to join Eddie the Experts, I bet you thought that, Club. Write your question in a letter to Eddie the Expert, St. Louis Zoo, St. Louis, Missouri. morning. Oh, oh, here he comes. Come on here, hustle on, you're late. Well, you have a letter for us anyway, so it's all right. Thank you. This letter is from Rochester, New York, and it's from Tom Johnson. Tom wants to know, should he run when crossing the street? Well now, that can be a dangerous problem. How about it, Sir John? <coughs> well, there's your answer, Tom. Sir John says no. Look carefully in all directions for approaching cars and keeping a sharp lookout, walk carefully across the street. Come on in with your questions, children. Sir John enjoys answering them. Write Sir John, St. Louis Zoo, St. Louis 10, Missouri. Well, Hoppity, you better get back to the post office. Start looking for next week's letter, but in the meantime, I'll give you a little tidbit so you can hoppity hoppity back to the office. like them. But what's a new dad? These are oodads, commonly known as a six-letter word meaning sheep in your crossword puzzle. These oodads, or sheep, originally came from the rocky slopes of the Atlas Mountains in Africa. The first oodads were brought from Africa to the St. Louis Zoo in 1926. Since then, 10 or 12 young oodads have been produced each year. Most people think that sheep do nothing but graze in meadows. In Africa, where these sheep came from, there are no meadows. Only a hot, dry desert with very little vegetation. What they ate while they were still there is still a mystery. In the St. Louis Zoo, the Oodads still roam the rocks. They are not looking for food, however. The zoo provides all meals and the rent is very low. You'll notice that most of these Oodads are wearing long beards. This is not a sign of old age. It is merely a muffler made by Mother Nature to prevent chest colds. 
These mufflers may be worn loose as you see them here, or tossed casually around the shoulders for sportswear. To complete the ensemble, the smart Udad carries a pair of sharp, pointed horns. This is the only wild sheep we have in America. It's the bighorn, or Rocky Mountain sheep, which is found in the central western states. You can see why they call it a bighorn. It has big horns. Udat! Why, it's an udat about to charge. And who feeds all these udads at the St. Louis Zoo? Eddie there. Eddie is chief cook and bottle washer to the 19 udads in his herd. Here is the zoo's enormous up-to-date kitchen, Eddie is preparing a little spread for his herd. What to give them? Let's see. Well, there's some rolled oats, bran, dog biscuits, and a bale of hay. Surely you can do something with that. So Eddie does. He gives the Udads four large buckets of rolled oats and bran, one half bucket of dog biscuits and 100 pounds of baled hay. Mix in with media, oh, don't forget the salt block. That's very important. This is the menu Eddie cooks up every day for the Udads. It's repetitious, but it's a well-balanced diet. And it's all washed down by the Udads with 30 gallons of water each day. Eddie's going to go outside now and feed his 19 Udads. Food prices are going sky high these days, and Eddie is like the rest of us. He's got to cut corners here and there. Only Eddie's lucky. If the Udads want steak, no problem. Let them eat hay. Here's the first course. Hope you like it, fellas. Eddie made it with his own hands. Oh, come now, don't be shy. Dig in. Uh-oh, they're looking for their place cards. Udads are very shy at first, but once at the table, it looks like a Saturday night in a theatrical boarding house. You notice that some of Eddie's dinner guests have no will. These sheep are wild and wouldn't be caught dead in wool. No, sir. Wool means that the sheep either can't afford mink or is a domestic breed. There are more Udads in captivity than there are in the wild state of Africa. And to tell you the truth, they never had it so good. To a zoo. Clarissa's so mad she can't speak. But I do know what she's thinking. Oh, you'd be mad too, darling. I played a whole summer outside to thousands of people. And now they want me to move inside for the winter. Please don't touch me. I loathe anyone touching my feathers. If they just ask me nicely, I'd go quietly. Look, Buster, if you don't get that veil off my head, I'm going to fly into a rage. And you know what happened the last time, darling. You were wearing claw marks for a week. Well, how do I look, darlings? Do you think this veil does things for my beak? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll go. You'd think I was some common pigeon or something. Who are you pushing, Buster? If you don't get off my tail feathers, I'm going to... Oh, well, really. Sometimes I think walking is better than these crowded buses. Now there goes the zoo's glamorous Clarissa to her winter quarters. Clarissa has her own private truck and chauffeur. The zoo does everything to make Clarissa comfortable. After all, she's one of the star attractions. Some service. She's off. Goodbye, Clarissa, darling. Write us a line, won't you? Don't forget. Wish you were here. Wish you were here. Wish you were here. Well, a few hours later, Clarissa arrives at her winter quarters. She's being carried in by her servants who have been with her for years. Clarissa will stay here until it's time for her outdoor appearance next spring. Now, some of her fans are trying to coax her out for her autograph. Please, Clarissa, may we have your autograph? Haven't you people got homes? Where do you all come from? Oh, darlings, I'm really exhausted after that dreadful trip. Later, darlings, later, I just want to get out of these feathers and stretch. Animals in the headlines. Bing the Barker, star performer at the St. Louis Zoo, watches with his two sons as trainers scrub out his luxurious private pool. Bing and his two sons have been with the zoo for a number of years.
Cleaning out Bing's pool is quite a job for the trainers. Just imagine scrubbing out 2,000 bathtubs and you get the general idea. Every afternoon, Bing and the kids do exhibition diving, push each other in the water, or just loll around on the terrace eating mackerel. Those workmen are having a pretty tough time. Look at the dirty rim you seals left in the tub. Shame on you. Well, you'd leave a rim too if you stayed in the same water for over a month. Well, the Saturday night bath is the same the world over, and Bing and the two baby seals aren't too happy about it. And those are the latest up-to-date headlines brought to you by Wheezy, your zoo correspondent, reminding all you animals, be kind to people. Good night. This is the story from the St. Louis Zoo for this week. And so, until next week, at the same time, same channel. Goodbye now. Backstage at the Zoo is written by John DeVries, spoken by Lou Parker and B.B. Osterwald, lighting technician Elmer Moran. Location film production of the Dumont Television Work. This is an audition program, not for public performance.